Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Cochran. Nearly 20 years ago, three very young musicians got together and they started a band. <clears throat> now that in itself isn't unusual. It's something distinguished Getty Lee and Alex Lifes and Neil Peart from the others. Their attitude, their talent, and conviction. With manager Ray Daniels, Rush founded a record label, and then with little fanfare and some minor airplay from a radio station in Cleveland, they went on the road. And that's pretty much where they've been ever since. Rush founded their own path outside the mainstream, and remaining true to their ideals, they have flourished. Tonight we're here to blow the lid off our three friends, to pay tribute to the music and the lives of Rush, and to salute a 20-year career that defines commitment, artistic integrity, and spectacular achievement. Twenty years, nineteen albums, nineteen tours, over thirty million records sold. All this without a top ten pop hit, unless you count Getty's collaboration with Bob and Doug and Great White North. The truth is, their success has been anchored by brilliant musicianship and playing live. If there's something about what we are that is defined on tour. There's something about live performance that kind of made us what we are. And it's almost like we have to pay respect to that in some way. I think what happened is Rush got a reputation as being really good value. As, an, as a live band. So anything that we recorded in the studio, we made sure we would be able to do it live. You go up there and for those two hours, every second is magnified and in, uh, you know, a hundred orders of magnitude. Every beat that I play, you know, every note that goes by, uh, every transition, everything is just measured. And my whole self-esteem is measured in those little milliseconds. A great performance uh, seldom happens more than a couple of times in the course of a tour. But you know what, you come off stage, that's when everybody's in sync and the crowd is in sync with the, with the band and the three of us are really playing tightly and you just come off knowing that you've done it. There's no feeling like it, it's just complete elation. Elation shared by millions of fans worldwide. They have several fan magazines, a computer fan network, their own incredible brand of fan loyalty. Out there live in the big rock halls, they're adored. There are certain people that are in their 30s and even 40s now who have been with us through the whole ride, and uh, our music has always been meant to be the soundtrack of our lives, and I always thought that was one of the nicest compliments when people have said to me that our music has been the soundtrack of their lives. And uh, Manil. Pert fan, Getty Lee fan, and an Alex Lyson fan, and they have set the standard by which all bands shall follow. A lot of people, I think, they look at us as their little secret in some way. Getty, no, 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 he jams, Neil, brrr, I did. <laughs> got it going on, baby Joe. We do find looking out into our audience that we see a great number of people with thinning hair and eyeglasses, which is a sign of maturity, I guess. And then at the same time, I see a lot of people who are 16, 17, 18 years old who we're not even born when we started touring the States. I grew up on Russia, the only power rock trio. Go Neil Peart, congratulations, Rush! The fact that we've been kind of outside everything, we have a very, I think, loyal audience that's grown with us and um, has lived through this whole thing that we have and shared it with us. And, uh, and those are the important things to us. Two thumbs up, definitely. The Mies van der Rohe quote I've always loved is God is in the details, so we want our audience to see God every night. Neil Peart is God. Go Rush! So the details become, you know, proportionately pretty important. Although, again, the, the basic reality doesn't change that we are three guys in a warehouse learning to play the song. My brother went to the same high school as Rush. And the most amazing thing was if you ever went down uh, to the United States, you could really, like, have a passport to cool them if you went, well, yeah, I'm from Toronto. My brother went to the same high school as Rush. I can remember in grade nine, we had an assignment at Lakefield College School in Northern Ontario uh, to write a essay on, uh, on a very, very 
respected writer throughout Canada, uh, and I picked Neil Peart. <laughs> or it would be, oh yeah, my brother uh, once backed up Getty Lee at a fight at the Gasworks and killed a guy for Getty. Hi everybody, we're four of the five members of Bare Naked Ladies standing here outside of snowy Maple Leaf Gardens, where when I was 15 years old, I saw my very first rock concert, and of course, it was Rush, the Signals Tour. Uh, I was blown away like the other 15,000 people in there. Uh, and most importantly, though, uh, I was inspired. So uh, congrats on your induction into the Hall of Fame. And uh, enjoy the limelight. Rush rules. Here's to 20 years of Rush and 20 more. I'm very, very proud that they're Canadian. All right, Rush, you guys rule. As musicians, Rush enjoy universal respect and consistently appear at the top of the critics' list for their instrumental mastery. They've been nominated for 35 Junos, they were Canada's group of the decade in the 80s, and were named Musicians of the Millennium by the Harvard Lampoon. Their dynamic clearly works. The dynamics between the three is, is quite extraordinary. There's a kind of a brotherly love, there's an in, in, instinct and intuition that uh, works in a miraculous way. I think the way it works in Rush is that um, we, we are a democracy. A true democracy, given there are only three people, it makes it so much easier. The dynamic is great with three people because two against one isn't fair. So you can't gang up on each other. The thing is, is that we spend a great deal of time laughing together and we enjoy each other's company. And we have for so many years. We're still, um, we're still like we were when we were teenagers. I mean, I know Getty and I have known each other since we were, uh, I don't know, 13 or 14, I guess. And um, every time I look at him, I think of that same guy I went to junior high school with. Well, I'm certainly the bossiest person in the, <laughs> in the writing session, so I push everybody around. Um, Alex really is, uh, I mean, he probably told you that he wrote everything himself. A lot of people don't know that I do everything and that Neil and Getty really have always worked for me. I mean, it's, it's not surprising. But uh, I felt sorry for them. And, you know, I do what I do, because I'm that kind of a guy. He almost got arrested for going around telling everybody that he wrote all of the Beatles material, too. <laughs> Alex is more spontaneous in, in terms of uh, his character, so his, his work tends to be. Getty is a little more methodical, and he has a great sense of melody. Getty and I will be very methodical and work over things detail by detail and build things in a more architectural approach of, okay, we've got this, it could be better if we add these things, and, and where Alex will just sit down and pick up his car and play something great. And Neil is a very, uh, you know, he's a very organized writer. He has great consideration for the fact that I have to sing what he's writing. As the years have gone by, and as he's become more of a fan of singers, his writing style has adapted. In all cases, it truly becomes the holistic idea of greater than the sum of the parts. You know, I write the lyrics, but they're improved by the other guy's input, you know. They write the music, but it's improved by all of us applying our arrangement ideas to it, our individual instruments to it. All those things add to it as it goes along. That works very well in our little group. If anybody's buying, nobody's hero. Congratulations, Dad and Getty and Neil, for uh, making it into the Hall of Farts. You deserve it. Alex 
Mike Skeddy and Neil, congratulations on tonight. And thank you for years and years of great, great music. I hope there's a lot more to come. I'm sure there will be. Um, maybe some Latino albums, maybe some different stuff. You know? uh, anyway, I, I, I was, never mind. Congratulations to Rush, musical heroes with a 20 year winning streak. Keep coming up, boys. I have a lot of respect for you guys as friends, as musicians, and as fathers. And uh, I can't believe you showed up for something like this, actually. So this is just great. So have yourself a great time tonight, guys. I think the main thing that people are forgetting about Rush is not so much the music thing, but the massive sex appeal. Thank you. Thanks for all your inspiration. Congratulations. You know, if you're a musician, guitar player, drummer, whatever other instrument, Rush is the guys to listen to. You guys are one of the best bands in the world. You deserve it. And uh, keep on trucking. Rush, welcome to the Hall of Fame, and good luck in the future. It's the future that counts. Congratulations, Rush, on being inducted into the Hall of Fame, and here's for another 20 years. They're the only band I, I know that um, included in their rider on tour um, a, French, a French Gerlitz teacher so that they could learn French after dinner rather than sit around and do whatever it is a lot of rock bands do. Well, Neil, Alex, Getty, you said it, and by gosh, you did it. It was a half a generation ago that I had the honor of presenting Rush with its first gold records. And now Canadians can be justifiably proud as you become the newest members of the Canadian Recording Hall of Fame. Gazette. I know of no other act who's released 18 or 19 records and gone out and toured on every one of them. Whether they, at, at that point in their lives, wanted to or not, they've been there. It's, it's very much been like a, a, a sports team that you show up every season and you may not win the World Series of the Stanley Cup every time, but you sure as hell make the playoffs. Rush has stuck it out. Neil, Alex, and Getty have always looked ahead, embraced the challenge, and that's the thing. They just keep growing. You shouldn't be a drummer picking up drumsticks for the first time saying, I'm going to play at Madison Square Garden. You know, you should say, I'm going to play at the church hall down the street. And for the band, too, we never thought we we're going to stay together for 20 years and make 20 records and, you know, sell out tours 20 years from now. Never dreamed of those things. We thought, okay, we're going to go on stage tonight and play. We don't try to stay in the same place. We're always trying to move forward. And hopefully we'll be able to continue that for another 20 years. Writing the, the great song, I still feel like it's in me somewhere. It's, uh, there's a really, a truly great song in me somewhere, but uh, it hasn't come out yet. This is an incredible band. Uh, more importantly than that, they're incredible people, and I think that's what makes for longevity. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the latest members to the Juno Hall of Fame. Neil Peart, Alex Lights, and Getty Lee. Rush.
Thank you. In all these 20 years, we've had more than our share of good fortune. Good health, good partners, and good families. So many people have contributed to what we have accomplished, and so many people are as committed to their missions as we are to ours. We are honored tonight by the Canadian music industry, and to us, this industry includes the drivers who carry us through darkness and bad weather to the next show, the guys on the crew who set it up and tear it down, the record company rep who gets our song on the radio, or the fan who introduces a friend to our music for the first time. They're all part of this industry. We may provide the music, but they provide the audience. We bow for the applause, but this industry brings all those hands together. Nietzsche said, without music, life would be a mistake. Music without an audience can be a sad thing, too. What is more unnerving for us is that without music, we would have to get a life. And without an audience, we would have to get a job. Thank you all very much for this honor. Thank you. I had a speech prepared, but Frank Sinatra stole it from me last uh, at the Grammy. So. Um, after what Neil has said, there's hardly much I can add to that. Uh, you know, he echoes my feelings uh, quite sincerely. Um, I'm very happy I've stayed in this country all these years. It's a great country to work out of. And I feel honored to have been able to watch uh, the Canadian music industry grow into what it has become today. And uh, I just thank you very much. Three dozen eggs, <laughs> um, two liters of milk, and 150 Valiums. That's kind of what it's been like. Thanks very much.